Hey guys, welcome back to RHR Jen. I'm so glad you're here. I had a lot of requests to revisit Revenge, one of my favorite books I've covered. I loved covering this book. I love everything that Tom Bauer had to say in it. And so yeah, so as per your request, I thought we could revisit one of my favorite like cringe awfulness from the time that they were, there's so much to choose from, but one of the, one of the awful cringe moments of their time with the Royal family. So I thought we could take a look at that again. Thank you for being here and for supporting, you know, it means a whole wide world to me. Now let's take a look at revenge today. We're talking revenge. I've had so many funny comments about you guys now saying revenge like that too. And I love it. I just want you to know, I love it. I love your comments so much. Yesterday's video went huge. Thank you for that. Thank you for everybody who wrote me messages. I read them all. I love them. Even if I don't write you back, I am reading them. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get into revenge uh, in just a second. I just want to shout out a couple of things. First of all, thank you for everything. I'm so glad you're here. If you're new here, welcome. I give silly recaps on things, but I also get deep into Hank and Skank, as I have affectionately named them, aka Harold and Fraud, Harry and Megan. So we'll get into revenge and we'll continue to deep dive that. We have plans to jump into Cordia's after this, and I've had lots of other recommendations for books. I'm so excited to jump in. I'm caffeinated today. I hope you can feel my energy. I am thrilled to be here. Also, let's see what else. Oh, I have the Hankins Kank merch, so check that. I'm not going to beat it over your head. Check the link. It's in the comments uh, and also probably in the video description. Just click the link. You'll be able to see Hank and Skank. I had a lot of orders for that already, which I love. I'm so thrilled. Also, check out Patreon, patreon.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. Listen, I get it. We're all broke right now. You don't have to do a monthly thing. It's $5 a month, but you can cancel whenever. Do a month. You get the access to my 80, whatever it is, videos that I have there. But also, Jay and I are going to jump on this week and do extra Hank and Skank coverage. We have a very cool idea I'm excited about. And we're going to jump on and record it exclusively on Patreon. So check that out. But without further ado, revenge. I had somebody in the comments, thank you for this, saying that I sound like <laughs> Miss Piggy when I say it like that. And I kind of love that because I love the Muppets. Um, except for Beaker. I used to love Beaker. But now that I realize Prince Harry looks like Beaker, I'm not into Beaker anymore. But <laughs> anyway, revenge. I do have to give a shout out to MC in the comments. You guys write me the best comments. MC pointed out, if William and Catherine were such fans of Megan's, why did they recoil from her hug when they first met? MC, that is such a good comment and such a smart observation. I wish I had noticed that too. So smart. So um, in case you're like, what? Remember, that was Harry's claim is that uh, Catherine and William were not welcoming of Megan. Remember, she's like, I'm just a down to earth girl in ripped jeans. And uh, and the claim is, is that William and Catherine recoiled from her hug upon first meeting. Maybe they didn't want you hugging them. That's their choice. It's not weird if you don't want somebody you're just meeting hugging you. But anyway, such a good point, MC. Thank you for that. Um, it just further shows that Harry makes no sense. And Harry and Meghan, all they speak in is platitudes and lies. Okay, let's get into revenge. So I don't have to keep saying it like that. So we pick up on chapter 22, humiliation. And you guys, I am feeling for Thomas Markle. That sucks. Thomas is feeling abandoned. He feels like the palace won't help. He felt isolated. No one was returning his calls. Um, so publicly his ridicule started to increase. That's where we left off. He was starting to show up in the tabloids. Megan then delivered quote, a wounding blow. Basically Thomas called up and told Harry that he really wanted to give a short speech at the wedding reception. Harry said it was not possible. Think about that for a second. These two, I'll have to find a new word for them. Um, oh, I had somebody recommend Woko Mono, and I love that for <laughs> for Megan Woko Mono. Okay, um, you guys are so clever in the comments. Thank you for that. I love reading those. They really give me a chuckle. But 
Okay, where did I leave off? Um, yeah, so they didn't want her dad to say a few words at the wedding reception, but they did have James Corden host a dance competition. Did you know that? Because that's the thing that happened. So they'll let that Yahoo James Corden, I can't stand that guy, give, give a dance competition, but they don't want the father of the bride to say a short speech at the wedding. So my mind went to, do you think it was at that moment that she was like, no, nope, you're not coming. Or do you think she already had it planned before that? Let me know. All right, where else? The media continued to try to make Thomas look bad. So Samantha Markle got in touch with this guy, Jeff Reyna, or maybe he got in touch with her. I don't know. She worked it out with Jeff Reyna. And they decided that what needed to happen is Thomas needed to have photos to show that he was not reclusive like they were reporting. They wanted to show him in a better light. They wanted to put out some sort of narrative since, she, you know, the only narrative coming out was from Megan. So, and for, I guess at that point from the um, tabloids and the, the press and stuff. God, don't get Harry talking about the press. That's all he can obsess about. Ugh, drives me crazy. Oh, P.S. I had the best responses. Thank you. Thank you. Because I pointed out, if you didn't see yesterday's video, please go back and watch it. That's one of my favorites I ever did. But Harry is Buster Bluth from <laughs> Arrested Development. So many funny things. I was literally, it hit me in the middle of the recording. He has mommy issues. He's obsessed with seals. He talks about army and <laughs> none of it's real. <laughs> and then you guys pointed out, plus he likes older women. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> he is Buster. It's just fits. You guys are the best. Okay, so I don't even know where I was going with this. I just, uh, it just made me laugh. Okay, so uh, Thomas was paid fifteen hundred for these an agreement to do some long distance candid photos. It was an agreement with that Jeff Reina guy. Plus, he would receive thirty percent royalties on whatever Jeff Reina made on these photos. So the twenty seventh of March. Thomas went out and had photos taken of himself looking at this book on Britain and he was sitting at Starbucks and then another one, he was at an internet cafe. I remember he was living at, in Mexico at the time. So he was looking up Harry and Meghan and then there was another one where he was measured by a, I'm using quotation marks, think Joey from Friends. <laughs> so he was measured by a tailor for a wedding suit. Now the tailor is not a tailor. It turns out he was a party shop assistant and he was paid $15 to hold that tape measure. So according to Tom Bauer, don't come for me, this is what Tom Bauer says, Thomas was gullible and desperate. So Tom was str Thomas was struggling and you know, I know I, I've voiced my opinion in the past. I'm not going to go into it here. I have my, you know, I have a few issues with some of the choices made by the Markle clan, but, but don't come for me in the comments. I get it. I understand what you're tr telling me. I've read all the comments about, well, it's only been Megan's narrative. It's not fair to them. I agree. And, and none of it warrants cutting off your family the cold way she did. She's an awful person. We can all agree on that. Let's leave it there. Okay, so meanwhile, the press had been pretty favorable toward, I'm trying to think what is another good name. I'd, I'm going with Hank and Skank. Toward Hank and Skank, especially Skank. They were excited. She's joining the royal family. They kept calling her like a way to update the royal family, blah, blah, blah. How'd that work out? Um, there is this lady, Camilla Long, and she nailed it. She actually called, at the time, she mapped it out that... Megan would have a big sit-down interview with Oprah. She predicted it would be after she and Harry divorced and once she's fled to America. Damn, she got that almost so right, right? I predict that there will be, she's probably right, after they divorce, which I do predict will happen sooner than later, uh, that Megan will be sitting back down with Oprah to talk about, I don't know, how horrible Harry was to her. and They'll they'll blame each other and I'll be here for it laughing all the time all the way. Um, <laughs> okay, so Meg was contacted by Oprah, funny enough. She, Oprah's people called Kensington Palace, and they wanted to discuss her interviewing Megan before the wedding. Megan was told by palace officials, no, you have to reject that offer. Well, according to Mr. Bauer, who does extensive research, love that guy, he said Megan's response is, quote, she would wait until the time was right. 
So you tell me that she's not plotting every bit of this before. I mean, we all know this. She's been plotting since the beginning. Uh, why else would she keep such detailed records and quote unquote receipts? His, re- I mean, Harry's receipts are written in crayon, but you know what I mean? <laughs> why would there be such documentation if you were planning to spend the rest of your life serving the family you married into, right? <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't work like that. Okay, so journalists were starting to discuss and starting to notice Megan's lust for fame. And I say, my God, she was still hiding it back then somewhat. And then now here we are. Let's discuss their lust for fame. I would say that applies to both Hank and Skank equally. Megan got a whiff of reporters starting to say that. And that's when, according to Tom Bauer, don't come for me, that it's that it, the narrative was spun victimhood, you know, the place where they're very comfortable being victims. They started to spin it as it was because of her race. Dun, dun, dun. So the quote from the book is they would use the race card to rebut unfavorable news stories. Huh? Where have we seen this? Oh, yeah, everywhere. Even the sugars in the comments, that's their go-to. I'm like, nobody cares. That's not what everybody's pissed about. Way to totally miss the point. Honestly, you guys, when people say that, it just tells me they have no idea what they're talking about, and they've done zero research into this. They're just blindly following her. Wake up. Okay, we go into, it's late April. Jeff Rayner, that photographer guy, is shopping around Thomas Markle's photos. Jason Knopf, the palace guy, is alerted to the plan, and he then turns around and lets Megan know. Megan is pissed. What else is new? Um, So instead of kindly talking to her father about it, she's calling him up and being super pissy. So... She asked Thomas if he cooperated with photographers, and he got nervous. He said no. Again, I have my own issues with the Markles. We don't need to go there. I don't... We're all on the same team. Don't be mad at me in the comments. But I do have to say, there are things that he did that make me shake my head. And I feel like... Maybe I'm reading into this, but Tom Bauer was kind of saying the same thing. I've said it before. I'll say it again. The beauty of Tom Bauer, it's not always what he says. It's what he doesn't say, and it's the way he dances around things. And he, many times when discussing Thomas Markle, calls him gullible. So Thomas Markle sounds like maybe made some bad choices. It doesn't mean he should have been cut off. That is not what I'm saying. One does not equal the other. That's not at all it. I'm just, I just feel the need to always be truthful. And my truth is, yeah, I don't know about that side of the family. Okay. But... I still say Megan is the worst times 10. She just, she's worse than all of the rest of them combined. So there's that. Okay. Now I say that and now I'm going to sound like an ass, but I'm okay with it. Thomas, I feel terrible for him at this point because he is stressed to the max. He has, they discuss his, con- he had had a heart attack, I believe. And then he continually was in and out of the hospital during this time because I'm not a doctor. I don't know how it works, but it sounds like... I don't know if it's such a thing. Mini heart attacks, like pre-heart attack. He was having a lot of heart-related issues, right? So they discuss him having been treated for heart-related stuff. He was in and out of the hospital. He um, had gone to a hospital there where he lived in Mexico, but he didn't feel like he was receiving the the, the right care, so he discharged himself. He went to get seen in LA. And while he was there, he left flowers for Doria for Mother's Day. Meanwhile, Reyna was working on selling these pictures and expected to earn about a hundred thousand for the pictures of Thomas Markle. Thomas at the same time was texting with Megan about his excitement to walk her down the aisle. So the Sunday before the wedding, it was the 13th of May, the mail on Sunday exposed the story that Thomas was complicit with the photographer. And this is truly where I do feel sorry for Thomas because that's awful. It's the weekend before her wedding and I I can't stand Meghan Markle. It's not that I feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for Thomas because maybe he was, as Tom Bauer, not me, says, uh, confused and <laughs> he thought he was doing the right thing. You know, what other, cho- like he didn't, 
he wasn't in control of his own narrative. And that's a sucky place to be, for lack of a better word. So he was just trying to do what he thought was right. The palace got embarrassed, a.k.a. Megan got embarrassed. This is where Megan and Harry got furious. So this is where I feel for Thomas. Thomas was in and out of the hospital. He was having chest pains. It sounds like he maybe had more than one heart attack around the time. And Megan and Harry's focus was on the wedding, not Thomas and his health. And that sucks. That just shows more of them being all about themselves, right? Megan is blaming the media at this point. Tom Bauer asserts that it was her way of dealing with all this was to spin, you know, do a spin like Harry likes to do as well and blame the media. So she, her assertion was that the Mail Online knew the story, but they waited till just before the wedding so they could mess with it to release the story. And I'm like, of course you think the whole world revolves around you, Megan. <laughs> Do you think they'd sit on a story like this? I think they'd put it out as soon as they got it. Come on, make it make sense. Meanwhile, Thomas is distraught. He texts Megan that he was so sorry and he offered at that point just not to come to the wedding. Harry called Thomas. He was calling Thomas. And it sounds like Harry was getting nastier and nastier with each phone call. Thomas offered to apologize and talk to the press and put out a formal apology, basically. And Harry's like, no, don't do that. Listen to me. Um, speaking of, I actually have Prince Harry here with me, aka my husband Jay, and <laughs> I have him on record. Tell us, Harry, what did you say to Thomas? Thomas, why are you in bed? Get out of bed. We have to talk. Quit being so lazy. Get out of bed. Why did you talk to the press? So again, Thomas was under men's stress. Jason Kanaw, okay, so Harry had said, don't apologize. Jason Kanoff from the palace called and said, he didn't say, go talk to TMZ, like <laughs> Thomas interpreted, but he did say maybe putting out an apology would be advisable. So this just confused Thomas. Again, not my words. This is according to Tom Bauer. He was confused. He didn't know what to do. He started to feel trapped. Meanwhile, he was stressed to the max. And unfortunately, he started having chest pains again. So he had arranged to go to a hospital in California at this point. He didn't like the care he was receiving where he lived. So he had a neighbor taking him to a hospital in California to check in. This is the place where he ended up getting heart surgery, but we'll get there. Meanwhile, Harry and Megan were not really being clear. They told him that there would be somebody there to collect him and take him to the airport. So this mysterious someone called him and says, I'll be there in two days to collect you. Be ready. And Thomas was like, sorry, got to go to the hospital having surgery. You know, Thomas thought it'd be a good idea in the meantime to speak to TMZ. He did confirm that he was working with Raina and apologize. Harry blew a gasket at this. Again, we have Harry here. He's going to let us know how he feels. I don't care what happened. I don't care what's going on. Don't talk to the press. He hung up on me. I guess I'll text him. Harry is freaking out over the press. What else is new? We read Spare. That's all he knows how to do is freak out over the press. So Harry and Me Megan decide that they're going to send security. But the weird thing that Thomas points out is that Harry and Megan sent security all right, but they sent it to Mexico. At this point, he was being prepped for surgery in California. So with, again, without saying it, to me, I'm reading into that Tom Bauer is telling us they're doing everything for the optics. Nothing is real. And that's exactly, that's where I feel for Thomas and the Markles in general is nothing is real. So they're doing it for the optics so that way they can come out, quote unquote, looking better. I love that it horrendously backfired, but they thought they'd be looking better. I'm talking about um, Harry and Meghan and um, nothing is real. Thomas had surgery on his heart and was advised by the doctors. Nope, you should not fly. He texted Meghan and was wishing her the best. And then he got a text from Harry saying, if you had listened to me, this would never have happened. Can you believe that? Thomas is recovering from heart surgery. And again, I don't know why I'm surprised, but Harry and Meghan can only focus on themselves and that damn wedding. Who cares at that point? It's not about one day in your life. You know, it's about your family's health. It, it's just wild. I don't have to explain it to you guys. You guys know, but I'm just saying it's just wild at this point. Okay, so then Thomas 
according to Tom Power, texted, if you really need me, I will come. TMZ reported at that point that Thomas would be going to the wedding. And then, you guys, it's heartbreaking because this is when Thomas receives his final text from Megan. I, I don't think he even said what it said, but he said that she signed off, love, Megan and Harry. And that was it. And he never heard from her again. That sucks. She had pleaded with him to come to London, even though he was laying in a hospital bed. I'm not laughing at the laying in a hospital bed. I'm just laughing at the delusion of these two. Like, you need to come to London. Our wedding is the most important thing ever. Yeah. So then they started up on the, this doesn't sound like you. Do you know what I'm talking about? They talk about this. I was in the Oprah interview. Maybe it was the Netflix thing. I don't know. I've watched so much of their crap. But they didn't believe that it was Thomas texting. And Thomas is like, it's me. What are you talking about? So my theory is it's all about optics. That is a good story for them to spend. Like, we didn't even believe it was him talking to us anymore. We thought it was, you know, Samantha or somebody else had intercepted his phone, whatever. So that way they could make a clean break, not talk to him anymore and blame everybody else because that's what they like to do. So they're doing the, it doesn't sound like you. Thomas tried to call Megan on her wedding day and of course no answer there he he hasn't spoken to her that sucks palace meanwhile is had to scramble basically 3 days before they put out that the thomas would not be able to come and they discussed it's because of his health issues several markles went to london to try to do broadcasting stuff all right let's get into the wedding. Oh, yeah. And then Doria arrived 17th of May. Lots of talk. And I guess I didn't really pay attention to this the first time I read Re Revenge. <laughs> How much Doria seemed to have some control. Or maybe they had... This is how I understand it. Doria and Megan have a weird mutual understanding that Doria gets control over some aspects and yet Doria will play the game as long as Megan plays the game. Megan pays for her stuff, her life, you know, everything. And Doria will say what Megan says. She'll back up her lies, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, according to Tom Bauer, she was ordered not to say a word. So nice relationship, huh? Sounds totally normal and healthy. <laughs> All right, let's get into chapter 23, the wedding. This is what I've been dying to talk about. All right, so it's time for the wedding. Let's talk about it all. Can we talk about this dress? I had a lot of comments about the dress. I, okay, I can't stand Meghan Markle, that's clear. But that aside, I was hoping to like her dress. I really, at that point, I didn't know what kind of <laughs> awful whatever she was, but I was hoping to like her dress. But you guys, it was all wrong. The hair was wrong, the dress didn't fit quite right, and no wonder, because it sounds like she was messing with alterations every two minutes and redesigning the thing and recutting it. There was several mentions of that. She was recutting it. My personal belief is, you know, she does what some brides do where you lose weight before the wedding. They, the dress just didn't quite fit right. I just didn't think it flattered or fit. And honestly, like for a whatever royal wedding, I thought it was really boring. I understand that you have to have, you know, a certain amount of modesty and all this stuff, but I just thought add something to it. It just was too boring. That's my opinion. Let me know yours in the comments. I hate the hair. The hair was just a mess. It could have been really beautiful with the tiara and... Don't even get me started on that stupid veil. That stupid veil. <laughs> but it wasn't. They mi She's just misfired everything. I will say I like the after dress when they showed that. The I'll put a picture of it up here. I thought she looked pretty there. And I like the aquamarine ring of Diana's. But I would like to point out that the things I like are not Megan herself. I like the dress and I like the ring. So that's that. <laughs> but I hate the wedding dress. So there. Finally, I got to say my piece on that. Let me know yours. I do love Kate's dress. I go back and look at I know I love Kate. But that aside, if I ignore who's in the dress, I just look at it. I do like the detail on it. I thought it was a really nice cut. It was very pretty, very flattering. She looked gorgeous. She did her own makeup. I think about that a lot. I just... I. It's surprising. It's just, she looked gorgeous. Okay, let's get into this wedding. So Tom Bauer so astutely points out about weddings are made up of family and friends. 
This one defied that. It reflected Harry's uh, deliberate and detachment from his past. So he was cutting uncles, cousins, um, friends, whoever Megan wanted him to cut, he would cut out. And I'm not blaming all, all this on Megan. I'm saying Harry's an idiot too. He, I mean, we know, you know, I love to say it. That guy eats crayons. He seriously, he is Buster Bluth. He just sits in the corner drinking juice boxes, right? When Megan wants something out of him, she probably plies him with juice boxes. <laughs> It says, okay, we're going to cut these people. And he's like, okay, give me some more juice. Um, <laughs> so the quote was, guests deemed to be no use to Harry in the future were not invited. So this includes people he grew up with. They even talk about the Skippy and Skip. You know who I'm talking about? The guy whose wedding that Megan crashed, where we have all those horrible looking photos of her. That guy, that guy was cut from the guest list, probably because he said, What's wrong with that horrible bitch? Why did she crash my, crash my wedding? <laughs> so he was cut. Um, a lot of people were cut. And the only family, as we know, that Megan had there, the only family was Doria. Nobody else. And uh, Samantha astutely points out, Samantha Markle, that no one was invited. So that way she could protect her lies that she had told Harry. And I thought, okay, all right. She knows what she's talking about. So... Instead, she invited her girlfriends, her admirers, seriously, um, Hollywood agents, her lawyers, okay, publicity advisors, suits actors. So this is interesting. This I remember at the time of the wedding, they focused on the suits actors being there. But according to Tom Bauer, did you know the suits actors were not invited to the evening dinner? Can you imagine? They go all the way to London to be at this bitch's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not even invited to the dinner. Nice, huh? Really nice people. Um, okay, so some of the celebrities they named off being there. I mean, we saw the guest list. It was huge. But David and Victoria Beckham, James Corden. Eh, no, thank you. Elton John, George and Amal Clooney. So they did put a funny focus on George and Amal Clooney. Apparently, Thomas Markle points out that he knew George Clooney because he had lit, oh, I already forgot. It was like some some movie George had been in. He had lit for him. So he actually had met George Clooney and he felt like, he said, I know George better than my daughter does. And George is, you know, basically front row of the wedding. So <laughs> nice, huh? God, I love Tom Bauer so much. He nailed this part. He talks about Oprah being there and he calls her, quote, television queen of victimhood and I say yes so well put I didn't even I mean I didn't even think about it like that and that is so well put and that so fits in to where they've come you know since the wedding because of course the king and queen of victimhood god I don't even want to give them royal titles the <laughs> dumb and dumber of victimhood Harry and Meghan um, ended up on Oprah's show. And P.S. guys, there are so many things flying around saying that Oprah will have nothing to do with them anymore. And I kind of love that, right? I kind of love that. I, those idiots turn their back on everybody um, in both sides of the family. And they turn towards celebrity. I'm using quotations on that one. And what happens? Celebrity's fickle, you know? <laughs> Oprah's like, no, thank ya. And I don't like Oprah, but... I think that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> okay, inviting, they invited Hollywood royalty. That's a quote from Tom Bauer. And they invited people that would firmly establish her roots in America. Tell me this is not pre-planned, right? Um, love me some Tom Bauer. I keep saying it, but I got to say it again, because he pointed out that 10 million people watch their wedding on TV. Impressive, right? Until Tom points out that it was 17.6 million that watched Catherine's wedding. Ah, oh, ah, oh, chef's kiss. Mwah. Love it. Love it. So yeah, 17.6 watched Catherine's wedding to William. 10 million watched Harry and Meghan's. Aw. Uh, P.S. 28 million watched Diana's. I thought that was interesting. All right. So Doria sat alone. People were surprised that she was not accompanied by a friend or an escort of some sort. Tom Bauer says that they people assume it was Doria's choice not to be accompanied, but that it was Megan's choice. Again, not shocking. She has to control everything, right? You know I love me some Kate, so I'm going to give some Catherine love at this moment. So here we go. I want to pet her. Um, I love her. Catherine being the 
amazing, wonderful, classy, I mean, regal woman, future queen that she is, she wore an Alexander McQueen that she had previously worn. And if you're like, Jen, why is that important? Well, I'll tell you. She did it on purpose because she's so smart. She knew that by wearing something she wore before, it would not take the focus off Megan. And so think about this. She'd been through these rounds with Megan. Megan was treating her horribly. Kate had to have conversations with her about being a human toward her staff. And still, Catherine wrote, rose above it. And she did this. And I find that so classy and so elegant and so much... She's so much of a better person than I ever could be. I'd be a petty bitch. I'd be wearing a... <laughs> I'd wear a white <laughs> dress and a veil to that wedding. <laughs> Uh, because I'm a petty bitch and it's fun. No, seriously though, I love Catherine and I love that classy move. So knowing that she knew wearing that outfit would put the attention on Megan where we thought at the time it <laughs> it belonged before we knew how horrible things were. Um, And I would also like to point out, so Catherine knew what to do, did the quote unquote right thing, if you will. You know what I mean? She she did this to keep the focus on Megan. And she was trying to signal, I'm not your rival. But also it's the complete opposite of what Megan did. Meaning Megan went to Eugenie's wedding and was still throwing a fit over that damn tiara that Eugenie got to wear that she didn't get to wear. So what did she do? She announced her pregnancy at Eugenie's wedding. Think about that. Nice, huh? really nice person. So then in this book, Tom Bauer points out, just like we all love Catherine, he seems to love her too. And he put this line that I love so much, I had to write it down. It says, unlike Megan, Catherine will eventually become queen. Oh, love it. She's already queen in my eyes. I love her. Okay. So Megan arrived in the chapel in a Rolls Royce. This was a very deliberate move. It was the same one that carried Wallace Simpson. And uh, yeah, she knew what she was doing there. Megan's dress got caught in the door. I did not know this part. I thought this was amazing. Megan's dress got caught. <laughs> it sounds like the people that were with her didn't overly want to help her because she was hideously rude the previous day. Now, I wish Tom Bauer had gone into detail here because I want to know every detail. What did she do? What did she say? How was she rude? I need to know these things, but he did not spill on this one. But he did point out she was hideously rude. So nobody was jumping to help her when she got caught in the door. I'm thinking, I wish the car had driven off. I, I'm not trying to hurt her, but I'm saying like, <laughs> you know, tear the dress a little bit. That would have been hilarious because then whose fault would it be, right? <laughs> she wore this white Givenchy dress. Again, we talked about the dress. She made a point to walk herself down the aisle until the halfway point. Tom Bauer points out it was her performer moment. She was a proud performer feminist gesture. <laughs> Charles picked up halfway and walked her the rest of the way down the aisle. So at that point, Charles and Camilla thought that the union would enhance the royal family. Oh, and then Tom Bauer calls the crowd awfully self-adoring crowd. And I find that so perfect because again, it's it's these two to a T, self-adoring William was very tactful, even though he and Catherine had their doubts, he still praised Megan, the reception, and called her the sister he never had, and the best thing for has. Guys, when I hear that has thing, I know it's his nickname, but I just think, I hear it in Megan's voice saying, who's has? Like, she's pretending not to know every detail of everything and have this completely orchestrated. Ugh. So George Clooney, okay, he comes up again. Apparently... His tequila was served at the reception. Okay. Um, so it's a weird way to invite these people and kiss their asses at the same time. James Corden hosted a dance competition. They had a huge fireworks display and they discussed the 32 million pound bill. Nice, huh? So from here we go. Three days later, the papers were going nuts for Megan and focusing on her activism. So the royals have this rule where they have to stay out of politics. It's what keeps them going, not to get involved in things like that. But Meghan had different plans on that. <laughs> Tom Bauer says, duchesses don't campaign. So I'm going to end it here because things are going to get juicy again real quick. So I'm going to leave it here because I really wanted to discuss that wedding and get into all the details there. 
this is where I need you. I need to know all your thoughts. You got to leave me comments. What are your thoughts on the dress? What are your thoughts on the wedding, the guests, all of it? Tell me the things that I didn't notice or that I missed. Fill me in. You know, I love reading your stuff. Guys, thanks for everything. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being so wonderful. I love you all. I truly do. (laughs) 